Welcome to our Inspire segment of Sahara TV. Today I have with me Ugandan journalist Arao Aminya, and she's going to talk to us a little bit about her work and about, uh, she's the founder of the African Association, or excuse me, the Association of African Journalists and Writers. And um, love to have her, we're grateful to have her on the show. So thanks for coming. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Karen. Yeah, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Where are you from? What brought you to New York? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, my name is Arao Emeny. Mm -hmm. um, I'm from Uganda, I'm northern Uganda in Lira. Um, I was in Indiana before. I've been in Europe for five years. Um, so I was studying journalism and politics in, New in Indiana, and I came to New York to uh, pursue my journalism career. Mm -hmm. What made you decide that you wanted to be a journalist or a writer? Well, a lot of a lot of factors uh, played into that. Um, basically, I had a lot of um, inspiring professors and inspiring teachers who told me, you know, there really isn't um, a voice or an outlet that really talks about African immigrant experience. Um, you know, there 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 are outlets for other ethnic groups mm -hmm. um, as far as the black experience is concerned, but that African immigrant experience is really, um, there's really nothing that's, you know, propelling us forward. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm really, really interested in telling our stories, especially from the immigrant experience, whether it's Africans who are children of immigrants, mm -hmm. um, like my little brother, or someone like me who came here as an immigrant and, you know, basically grew up here. Um, so just looking at those stories, seeing how we reconcile our identities and how we adapt and integrate into the society. Now what is your medium? You're a writer? Or do you also do broadcast? Mm -hmm. Or what is your, how do you tell your story? Um, I've studied print and online. Um, so it's print and online. It's not broadcast. Um, sure. But that's something that I'm also exploring as well as photojournalism. Mm -hmm. Now as an African or, um, or also as an immigrant to, mm -hmm. to the United States, I mean, we keep hearing in the news we want to change the image of Africa. We want to get away from the stereotypes. We want to get away from the negative images. How do you think that um, writers and journalists and people such as yourself can help to change that? Well, I think, first of all, we have to stop being reactive. Mm -hmm. You know, when something happens, like um, Kony 2012, for instance, with Uganda, or, um, you know, with the Nigerian protests, mm -hmm. or whatever, the, whatever big hot news is coming from the continent, I think we ourselves, as Africans, especially Africans living in the diaspora, mm -hmm. we need to make sure that we push our stories constantly, that we're in control of those narratives, mm -hmm. instead of being reactive and, you know, once, once there's a story out there then we come up and say no 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 let me correct it we should always be in the process of actively engaging people um, so that when those stories do come out we already have a voice we've already made that known um, our narratives our perspectives yeah. and how do we do that how do we be active instead of reactive does that mean starting blogs does that mean starting our own shows does that mean um taking to twitter how do you how do you see us being active i'm um, karen you named <laughs> you know okay. really great ways um because that's what i encourage even if someone is not a trained journalist um like the people I've been working with for the past couple of months, I'm encouraging, especially young women or uh, young people out of school, start a blog. Tell me what it, it, it means to be a Guinean living in the Bronx or a Guinean immigrant. What does that mean? What is that experience? So, um, and as you know, there are a lot of radio stations here in Harlem and the Bronx, African-owned, African-run radio stations, but you would never hear about them. You'd never know about them, um, that they exist, but it's telling those stories and making ourselves more visible Mm -hmm. um, so that people know that we're, we are here, and when they talk about our issues, we're part of that conversation. Definitely. And as far as, as the challenges, though, I mean, that sounds all well mm -hmm. and good, but still the fact is that we still have a long way to go in really changing these narratives. What are the challenges that African writers and journalists, um, in your view, have, have faced in trying to sort of change the, the way that we're covered? Okay, that's a great question. Um, from my experience um, engaging with members of the Association of African Journalists and Writers, the uh, theme that keeps coming is, you know, we're so disconnected. You may only know what's going on mm -hmm. in the Ghanaian 
um, community. We as as right. Africans, as in Africans here. you may only know what's going on with the Guinean community. Mm -hmm. I may only know what's going on in the Ugandan community, but we may have the same issues, whether it's immigration, um, unemployment, or you know integration or mm -hmm. intergenerational issues. But because we're not talking to each other, mm -hmm. we don't know. We can't make that connection. Um, so as journalists, I think, and writers, mm -hmm. I think it's very important to communicate and collaborate and figure out, you know, what do we have in common in our communities that we can talk about um, holistically and, and just figure out how do we get around this together as opposed to living in our own isolated, insulated pockets. So you're advocating a pan-African approach? Um, I wouldn't say pan-African sure. approach. I mean, I, um, I'm very much um, aware of you know, that word can be defined in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. um, um, what I would advocate is simply working together, finding a way to work together, be it Pan-African or not. Mm -hmm. um, so just figuring out a way how journalists, and I'm here in New York City, so that's what I'm you know, really concerned about, mm -hmm. but how do journalists and writers in New York City come together, whether they speak English, yeah or they speak French. You know, how do African journalists and writers get together so that when there is a major issue or a major story about the African continent, um, mainstream media doesn't run to experts or sure. professors who only studied Africa on an academic sense but never lived there. How, you know, you want these experts, these journalists and writers who are actually from there to be the voice pieces. Now, as far as the mainstream media, mm -hmm. is another way to change the narrative is just to get more of us at CNN or at BBC and more of us to, to try to infiltrate the mainstream media world? Um, I disagree with that. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm not really about infiltrating <laughs> okay. or being a part of um, those systems that are already getting our stories wrong in the first place. I'm about building our own. You know, I'm about having uh, building magazines or building newspapers or building websites, radio stations. They're happening right here, mm -hmm. especially in Harlem and the Bronx. I say, um, you know, I, I feel like we need to be at the leadership on leadership or have some sort of decision making power. And I don't feel that's possible when you're, you know, working at a low level position mm -hmm. at a newspaper or at a website. I believe that um, the only way we can get our story right is if we build our own companies, if we build our own organizations. I'm, I'm very much an advocate of um, owning it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and a part of owning your story is owning the companies, or is True. owning the publication. So I'm very much an advocate of African-owned businesses. True. Mm -hmm. True. That is another approach. And also on that end, um, I've worked before in, mm -hmm. in radio a little bit, and I've tried to pitch stories that relate to Africa. Okay, so you know and exactly that, what I'm talking well, about. Well, <laughs> I mean, you come across, um, another issue that you come across when you're trying to get some of these stories um, to the public is that, well, our audience doesn't really care, right. or they say Africa doesn't sell, right. is, is what they say, unless it's a story about a war, mm -hmm. or about some way that people can get involved in a humanitarian way, like mm -hmm. stop Kony in, in Uganda, and right. you know, go and take shots to end poverty, you know, mm -hmm. that, so, mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's, it's difficult, but I think that your point about we need to own some of these business businesses and make some of these editorial decisions right. about what we think will sell is, is a very salient point. Right, and a good example of that is Sahara Reporters. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We try. <laughs> We're trying. We're doing the you're doing the best we can. Now, as far as um, so your personal experience mm -hmm. with um, with writing about Africa, what are your favorite stories or your favorite um, topics to cover when it comes um, to Africa? I, I studied politics before journalism, so I'm a politics junkie, I'll okay. be completely honest with you. Um, I'm very interested, especially in African immigrant stories mm -hmm. here in the United States, um, you know, about how immigration policy affects us. Okay how the public school system affects us, you know? How, um, I'm very interested in integration. Mm -hmm. How do we reconcile all our identities, being black, being immigrant, um, retaining our languages, even though we speak with American accents, you, you know, you have to go home and speak <laughs> your language to your parents, <laughs> you know? So I'm, I'm very interested in how we really maneuver and continue being African. What mm -hmm. does that mean, you know? Um, and I'm, I'm, like I told you before, I'm very heavy into politics and very heavy into social issues. Cause, so I'm really, really concerned about issues like, uh, for example, 
um, African parents who come to this country um, may not be involved in their child's education and it's not because they don't care it's mm -hmm. because back home it's more of a hands-off approach and you're respecting the teacher but here it's more interactive hands-on so just uh, exploring those stories and figuring out how do we uh, reconcile both of our cultures you know we all we constantly have our foot in one world mm -hmm. in in two worlds one back home and one here so yeah. and do you find that audiences back home are interested in how african immigrants are are faring in the united states yeah definitely um they're all just about adjusting how are we adjusting mm -hmm. to the united states and are we retaining our cultures at least that's what ugandans are always asking sure. me on facebook you know have you forgotten already where you're home? Exactly. Are you still, you know, do you still know how to speak the language? Mm -hmm. And I are can you, imagine. And the most important thing is, are you still eating the food? <laughs> but you can find that here, right? Yes. So yes. There are Ugandan restaurants. I'm not here. I no. have to go to Boston. Boston? Yes. Oh. But so I frequent Ethiopian or, um, you know, other East African restaurants. Sure. <laughs> At least close enough geographically. Right, right. Now, okay, can you tell us a, a little bit more about the Association of African Journalists and Writers, why, why you started it, mm -hmm. um, kind of where you guys are now as mm -hmm. far as, as basically what you do? Okay, we started in late March, and basically what it is is a platform to unify African writers and journalists um, in North America. We're starting uh, um, right now in New York City, New Jersey, but we definitely have interest from as far as Canada. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we have journalists and we're creating a database of journalists in North America so that, for example, if there's a university who wants to find a Ghanaian journalist who specializes in politics, they can come to us and have that narrative, have our narrative instead of others always telling our stories. So you guys have meetings and yes. meetups, okay? Right, meetings and events, and we're definitely um, right now in the summer, we're more of planning in our planning phase, but start September, we're going to you know, hit the ground running and really, really make ourselves very visible um, on the media landscape in New York City and New Jersey. Okay, so how can people get involved if they're interested in um, participating with the AAJW? Okay, um, they can get involved. We have an active Facebook group right now. Um, so all they have to do is go to AAJW on Facebook. Um, we're in the process of building our website right now. We're trying to make sure we find, um, we're looking at a Senegalese website okay. uh, and also a Ghanaian website. So we're trying to figure out who's going to actually uh, build our website. Um, but they can go on Facebook or they can contact me at journalist at .com. Um and I'll make sure I give you all that information. Alright, fantastic. Now do you have any sort of last words for people who are interested in writing and interested in telling their stories and, and becoming journalists? Mm -hmm. Any sort of last words of wisdom and advice that you would have for them? Um, I really wouldn't say last words of wisdom. For me, in my experience, I've failed many times okay. but what matters is when you get up so um, with this organization for example it's been a learning process but in the, but during the time I've met a lot of wonderful wonderful people who have helped me along the way so just being open-minded and just you know trying to make sure you take in as many lessons as you possibly can Great. Well, thank you so much. Well, Raul, thank you so much for joining us thank today. You, Karen. It's great to have you in the studio and to learn more about AAJW, and we'll definitely be following up. Mm -hmm. So, if any of you are interested, again, you can look up the Association of African Journalists and Writers. They are on Facebook, mm -hmm. and you can also contact. You also have a website, right? Right. Right. Raul Amenya uh -huh. at uh, dot, dot com. com. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. So check out her work. And again, thank you for coming. Thank you so much. Okay. Thanks, and stay tuned.